So a pro player Snipedown recently said some not very friendly things about 343 and how the internal workings are there, and well, this is what he said. Maybe like a competitive tester for games? I think 343 had a team that another... I would never be a competitive tester because those opinions are not taken seriously and you are so low on the totem pool. And the reason that... I think the reason that 343 has such an issue with internal things is you, you have... Th this was my issue when I did stuff with 343 was like, it's all the chain ladder. And if you're here, your opinion means nothing to the person here. Like literally nothing. I, I went there to give my opinion. I played thousands and thousands of hours and I got my, the, I got their fucking eyes rolled in my face for, for giving my opinion on a change that they made. And it, it was like, I, it was like I was an idiot. And I'm just like, I have so many more hours than you. I refuse to be a part of that after that. I said, I will not come back. Oh, I'll tell, I mean, it was, it was Quinda Hoyle. I mean, that, that's just who it was. Cause it was his change that, it was his change that I was shitting on. And I wasn't even shitting on it. I was just like, how are you going to take the battle rifle in Halo 5 and make it a non hit scan weapon with a random burst when you have, when the whole point was to try and make the pistol not as strong and you're gonna add the BR into the game and, and make every shot in the spray a random direction. No, I was like, no one's ever gonna touch this weapon again. And guess what happened? No one touched the weapon again. I remember I literally stopped speaking after that. I stopped getting any input after that while I was there. I was like, I don't have anything to say. He's running Doc's game now. So I don't know if anything's changed, but he's like the, one of the heads at, of Doc's game. So yeah, not the friendliest review when it comes to working with them. So I do feel like this kind of touches on a repeating pattern that we've seen with 343 and how they develop Halo and how they take feedback from the community. I'm just getting major flashbacks when Green Skull did his open letter to 343 video. And this is what some of the pro players had to say about the game. Do you feel like 343 is really listening and using your feedback to make a positive change in Halo. Like a half and half type thing, I would say. I think that there's people who share the same opinions as not only pro players, but like competitive players and some people who play outside of that, like Team Arena, Team Slayer, Team Doubles. I think that it's safe to say that, you know, just because maybe Warzone players or some Arena players or some Slayer players don't agree with the way that we want to want Halo to be played, there's also people on the same boat as us when it comes to that and that community. Some stuff is about half listened to and you know, you have people who in the studio who can make a change that agree. And I think that we've seen that happen before. But then there's also times where that person who can make a change or those people um, don't agree with what we say. And then that's when it's not listened to. So I would say it's kind of 50-50. I, I think that sometimes they, they take our feedback and they either twist it or they just don't listen at all. Simply put, just no. Uh, but an example that I have was um almost right after the first like I think pro season ended or the online league ended. I don't think it was it might have been after one tournament. We were in a call, pro call, and we were going over like the maps of like what worked, what didn't. And one of the maps that was brought up, everyone, like it was almost unanimous. The pros were just like, no, that's good. Like Overshield's in a good spot. Noob combo's in a good spot. Like like that's probably the map we shouldn't touch. And so it was like, well something's gonna change. So what is it? And we were like uh no, no, nothing like that don't change anything we just said it was good and like they ended up changing stuff so there Summarized was this forced it. change for the sake of change yeah it was, and it was like we were changing you know making it, it as, as competitive as possible it's the whole point of those meetings and when people were like yeah this is a good one this one's good we don't really you know, everything's in a good spot it's balanced like right now uh, and then the, the comment like, well, something's got to change. So change for the sake of change is something that we actually kind of see quite often when it comes to Halo Infinite. Like I remember when they nerfed the battle rifle, like Snipedown mentioned that not a whole lot of people were saying that it was overpowered or anything. They could like, yeah, it could be a little bit of a tuned down a bit, but nothing that's like too crazy. And they just went way overboard with that nerf to kind of just make it less useful and not powerful at all. And people stopped using it, like Snipedown said, myself included. We can see this with Halo Infinite. There are some changes that were just kind of made for the sake of change. Like for the kill medals example here that you can see that they try going like a tier list kind of thing where like common being green, then blue, purple, then red being like a rare kind of metal. But like, 
they don't really mean anything into the game but you know we see this kind of also being implemented throughout the game but like this rarity that comes with the different types of things within the game they don't really mean anything in the game or like for example we see we're here like the 40th kill streak right here being demon grim reaper boogeyman nightmare and stuff like that besides being like unfreaking believable and all those kind of traditional ones that we have i feel like that was kind of just changed for the sake of change but we do see 343 succeeding in other points of taking community feedback because they're certainly not falling on deaf ears we see things with like the pulse carbine being much more useful useful we see the plasma pistol now being much more useful but then we also see the commando getting a buff to make it kind of almost like overpowered at some points but then we see things like with the competitive side of things with like the mangler is still there the sword is still in play but the sword got nerfed to where now there's like a melee trade that can happen with the game uh but they also saw like with the ga of like the drop weapon that got nerfed to where it's the same as just switching your weapon so it seems like it's kind of like uh, not all things are ignored but not all things are changed from consideration from community feedback so kind of like what mick Wynn was saying that it kind of depends on who you're talking to when it comes to seeing changes being made because there's definitely people at 343 that definitely would agree with some changes that you would like to see within halo infinite but there's also people at 343 who would disagree with the changes you want to see just like you would online so i think it kind of comes more just like a representation of what just like a bureaucracy typical office bureaucracy that you have within work uh, if you guys work in an office you definitely know what i'm talking about where it kind of matters about who you're talking to and what position they're in to get things done the way you want them done and then round it back to what snipe down was talking about with his clip i would say that he's definitely coming from a competitive standpoint as well when it comes to these different types of balance changes that the 343 has made. Now, I do feel like the Infinite Sandbox was definitely designed with competitive in mind, as I don't really feel you're much in the way of weapons that are kind of wacky or weird kind of stuff. Uh, very much focused on like efficiency and placement within the sandbox, which is definitely a competitive mindset, which from what I've heard from like Quinn Del Hoyo, he definitely does enjoy that kind of style of sandbox, and I do as well. And I generally do feel like it's infinite sandbox is very isn't a really good place actually even after the winter update i would say the commando might be a little too good but that's just my opinion so not everything a pro player wants for halo is going to be something that would be good for halo if that makes sense though they're certainly worth taking into consideration as these guys grind the game they put so many hours as snipe down mentioned though of course not putting more hours than other people doesn't mean that other people's opinions are better than others it just means that they might have more experience with the sandbox and stuff like that as i think we was kind of saying but it came up kind of a little arrogant not gonna lie but i would agree that pro players definitely understand sandbox mechanics and balance placements of weapons and maps and, and ba map balancing and stuff like that better than i would so i would trust their opinion over mine for most things that within halo but maybe not everything pro players want within halo if it's sandbox would fit for the halo community community if that makes sense and also keep in mind a lot of people who made halo infinite and who made halo 5 are not there anymore at 343 many people left during the launch period of halo infinite mainly because most of their heavy lifting of work was done and they want to move on to different projects makes sense and the repeating theme i keep seeing when it comes to people who work at 343 then leave and what i read from glass door reviews and stuff like that that generally the sandbox or the tools that they have to work on halo are a little difficult as there are a lot of in-house specific kind of things they're not very universal but then i also hear that most people who work at 343 then say, yeah, it was actually a great experience working there. You get to work on some cool stuff, working with some great people as well. Though the tool sets might be kind of what really slowed things down. So I think that's kind of where we're at right now with Halo. Again, like I've said previously that uh, we do see things starting to move forward right now with Halo Infinite. A lot of developers have hit up Twitter, like I've shared multiple times on the channel here, that they're like excited about the winter update and things to come afterwards as well, that they really feel like we're starting to make some progress on the front end of what players are experiencing to be able to enjoy Halo as intended. With the winter update, it's the first step forward to true seasonality with Halo, rather than having just two seasons for a year and a half worth of content it's a step forward to we're kind of think like season 2.5 and with the winter update and then season three coming around in march most likely then in september coming around with the season four update which will actually bring like story content which is going to be the main driver that we've talked about previously on the channel when it comes to telling the story of halo infinite for moving forward because 
Campaign DLC is quite a ways off. We're seeing new sandbox items, new developer made maps coming in. That's going to be really exciting stuff. And we've covered it previously on the channel here as well. So really what I think what Snipedown's talking about, like, yeah, there is genuine frustration there. There are genuine issues that he's experienced. That I know a lot of people have been experiencing with 343 really ever since they took over Halo. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom. Like they are doing some great things there as well. Kind of what McWin said, kind of depends who you're talking to and what you're asking for to actually have things change for the better of Halo because everyone has their opinion. All developers have their thoughts of what they want the game to be and stuff like that. And so it's always just con constant like feedback going back and forth between the community and the developers, which is going to be something that's always going to be happening with Halo, no matter what. It happens with every single game out there, no matter what. But I'm sure after watching this clip, you're like, yeah, 343 is the worst company ever, yada, yada, yada. But it's not quite that. It's there's some good and there's some bad. It comes with every development team. Well, the main thing and reason why I even made this video of talking about this clip from Snipedown is to provide a little bit better context to what he's saying and also show that there are some good aspects that 343 is doing. But yeah, there is some bad parts that are definitely worth acknowledging. But also the point out that we've seen this kind of criticism before with 343 and i'm wondering if it's just 343 is it just general workplace culture in an office where managers really want to have their vision of what they want which i've seen personally in my data analytics career that i had before my new job obviously but the main thing is just don't stop providing feedback you know, let them know what the issues are and they'll take that internally and we'll see what happens from it. I mean, they're the people who make the game. It's up to them with their vision of what they want Halo to be. But it's also very important to listen to the community when things need to be fixed to have it be an enjoyable thing because you need to please your customers. And when your customers are not happy, well, then they stop involving themselves with your product. And if you think Halo Infinite is dead, no, it was just sleeping. And this video explains why. So thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.